What's going on guys? It's Ridiculous Ripley here, bringing you another tutorial. This tutorial is going to be slightly different. I'm going to be showing you how to use your Stream Deck here in the bottom left. How to use it to help you edit your photos on Photoshop. Okay, so real quick, we're going to go ahead and see what happens when I press my Photoshop button, which is right here. And boom, it brings it up, okay? So that's pretty cool. Um, let me show you really quick how to do that, and we'll get on with the rest of it. You want to open up a new profile, okay? You'll go to System and Open. You'll drag Open wherever you want it on there. And then you'll search for the app that you want it to open when you press it. So mine is going to be, um, obviously, Photoshop. And that's really all you got to do. I can delete the title if I want because I know PS stands for Photoshop. And we'll get that off to the side. We'll minimize this again. And you can still see that that PS is there. So when we press it, it'll bring it right back up. So we've got that going for us. And real quick, I'll show you what my Photoshop is set up like. And I'll, I'll kind of walk you through how to do your own. So right now I have mine. I guess I don't need to show you that. I got it down at the bottom left. I'm not used to using two cameras, so give me a break, right? Um, so down here in the bottom left, you can see that I have an undo button. I have this blurry image, which is the glossy and blur. Is what I have it hot keyed to. This one right here, I have hot keyed. You can, you can label all these so you don't forget. Um, I have this one to gradient overlay, which I mainly use for like my, my titles, like my, uh, my words and everything like that. And then the folder, which is my folders that I keep all of my editing software in. So like if I wanted to bring in the LSPDFR, I'll show you guys here in a minute. Um, the zoom, the zoom out, you get the inner glow, your outer glow, your drop shadow. Whenever you do word, you can have the drop shadow to make it kind of like a 3D effect type deal. Um, this is the back button to get out of this folder, which is not really part of Photoshop. It's just there for me. And then this here is the export. When I'm done with my photo and instead of having to go all the way up here, go to edit. I'm sorry, file, go down to export and export as. All I got to do is click this button here and it'll bring up the export. So, I mean, you, you don't need the Stream Deck to edit all this stuff, obviously, but it makes things a lot quicker, in my opinion. It's having to go up there, search for it, drag down and all that stuff. Okay, so real quick, um, I'm going to show you what some of these do and how I use them really fast. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So you click this folder button. Um, you can do it. This is my, like I said, my, uh, my editing folder that I just dragged and dropped in here. Um, you should know how to add keybinds by now. If not, I can make a tutorial on Stream Deck if, if you'd like. Um, so when I click that button there, it'll bring up everything that I need for my thumbnails, for my video editing, um, things of that sort. So we're going to go ahead and bring in the Grand Theft Auto emblem. And then we're going to click that folder again to bring it up. Or you can just come down here and click. It doesn't matter either way. We're going to use also the Natural Vision Evolved. These are the main ones that I use. And then LSPDFR. Okay, now that we got all these in here, we need to oh, get to our cursor. There we go. And position them kind of where we want them. I normally have this one up in this direction. This one I shrink down. Oh. Oh, what am I doing here? Hang on, guys. Yeah, that's not perfect, but that's fine. You just want to... There we go. Okay. Bring that up here. Make it smaller. Put that there in the corner. And then I like to put the LSPDFR on top of it. Kind of give it that effect that it kind of goes with it. So just like that. So now that all that's there, um, that's pretty much, except if I'm going to type something down here at the bottom, which I can go over here and I can look for the T and I just drag and do whatever. However, I don't want that for this demonstration purpose. Um, so, okay. So now I'm ready and I want to put a border around my, my whole entire thumbnail. Okay. So I'm going to go over to. Um, what is it? I think it's 
inner glow and it'll bring up you like instead of having to go let me show you real quick so that button brought me straight to here and this is the last border that i used you guys will see it in the thumbnail of this video and it automatically took me here and automatically brought it up and um made it active okay if i didn't have that button program there i would have to come over here double click there on the corner come over here go and find inner glow oh i'm sorry inner shadow it's not i gotta change that it's it's inner shadow not inner glow and then click on it and then i could edit it from there so really it just saves you a few clicks by coming over here clicking that button and it's there i mean it's going to cut down your editing time by quite a few minutes okay so i got that on there now that's good for me and now this is going to be the grand theft auto part um so let's go ahead and normally i do the drop shadow which i put right here sorry it's a little blurry guys i don't the camera's not focusing in click the drop shadow and look at that i didn't activate any of the other layer styles it just went straight to drop shadow put a check mark and then it did my very last setting that i did on it so it's just got that ever so slightly um shadow behind it we're gonna go and click okay on that i just noticed it didn't shave my inner shadow there we go and then same thing for the i believe this is the lspd of r1 let me look real quick nope it's a natural vision evolved okay so this one i mean you, you can do a little bit of everything with it i do the outer glow sometimes um just to kind of give it a different look okay i mean you could do that you can do anything but you can make the pink stand out more if you want just to make it look different and make people think, oh, you know, wow. So you got that there. And then last but not least, all you got to do is click on it once. And then whatever you press on your stream deck is what it's going to do. Okay. So we want to do the drop shadow on this. And that's all I want to do for that. But if I wanted to do the outer glow as well, I mean, you just go to it and click. But I just want to do the drop shadow on that. I might even move it down here. There we go. That looks a little bit better, I think. At least for this video or for this uh thumbnail if you're doing some detailed work on it i'm sorry let's let's do this real quick um <clears throat> this uh glossy and blur i like to click on the main background if you just want the main picture to just be slightly blurry so you can focus on everything else you can hit that glossy and blur and you can adjust how blurry it is okay so we'll go and leave it there like that. Click OK. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Unless you want to type something in there and do that. Or you want to do some really in-depth to where you're going in there and using the pen and outline and stuff. You can still do all that. Um, you can also keybind. So you just have to click that instead of going up here looking for it. And be like, OK, there's the pen. I want the pen tool, not the freeform. You can go straight to there, click a button. It'll automatically do the pen tool or the free, front, or the free roam pen tool. It'll, it'll, I'll show you right now. Let's, let's do it right now. Let's go to edit. Going to go all the way down here, fourth from the bottom. It says keyboard shortcuts. Okay. You click on that. And this is only the half of it, guys. So in order to get like um, the glossy, the Gaussian blur and the uh, gradient, all that stuff, you just go to filter. Oh, I'm sorry. Layer style. And you come down here and you find where it's at. So for me, it's right here. Here's inner shadow. Gradient overlay, outer glow, drop shadow. I mean, it just lists everything there. So find which one you use the most, click on it, and then keybind it. Now, there's a lot of keybinds already in Photoshop that I've noticed because if you go to enter one in and it's already taken, it'll ask you if you want to override it. So make sure you always look to make sure that you really want to override it. If not, simply backspace out of it and then uh, just make a different one. I've noticed that a lot of the F functions, like the F1 through F12, aren't used. So I'll do like Control F1, Control F5. And if you use it and you're not allowed to use it, because there's some of them that you're not allowed to use. So like Control F4, I think, can't be assigned because it is used by OS, okay? So we're going to go and leave it at um, Control F3. And if that didn't work, you know, just keep going. Just, just try different ones. Um, there's all sorts of keybinds that you guys can think of. 
so that's like for the the layer stuff that's all i have installed right now um however i mean you can go down here and you can look at you can keybind oh my goodness filters you can do um types then you go up here to shortcuts for this is only the application menus you can do panel menus so you can choose exactly what kind of gradient you want to use or what kind of reflective gradient or um what kind of layer comps what kind of path what kind of patterns shapes and then instead of having to go and double click on the deal out there at the bottom you can just simply push that button it'll take you straight to it now tools this is what i was talking about earlier instead of having to come over here and be like okay where's the pin at okay there's the pin right here it is you just find the pin there's a pencil tool we got to find the pin here it is pin tool it's already key bind the p okay so that one's really simple if you wanted to add that to this you just need to bring up your stream deck menu go to add a hotkey and then you want to assign the hotkey to p it's that simple and then you can go to google and type in pin and then just drag and drop the or you have to save the image as and then drag and drop the image over here let's just let's do that real quick so i can show you pen icon just like that oops let's do this the save image as save and then as long as you're selected on that you simply just drag and drop and it automatically even updates on your stream deck right away okay so we can go and exit out of that. That was just to show you. So now that we get that key bind, we can exit out of that. And let's say we're doing this, we're moving stuff around, put it back. And then we want to do some fine details. So we want to press this zoom button and we can zoom in. And then we can press this to go straight through our pin and we can draw lines. Cut it out, all that stuff. If you don't like that, here's the undo button. Up top, undo, undo. I mean, it's not hard to remember that Control Z is undo, but all the other keybinds you gotta remember. You don't want to have to press two keys, or I mean, it's a number of things. Just the Stream Deck makes it a whole lot easier. I'm gonna zoom back out, and that's gonna be our finished product, guys. I mean, it's real simple. If you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to use your Stream Deck with Photoshop or your Stream Deck with anything, um, let me know, and I can help you guys out. Without further ado, I believe that's it. Um, I can't think of anything else. If I went through this too fast and you guys need me to slow it down, and like I said, go into more in-depth, let me know, and I will see what I can do. But that's it.